right here on the roof of this happy little barn. Just right here on top, wherever you think the sun might hit it. But you decide that this is your world, your canvas. You control it. And that looks really good. That looks really nice. Hi, I'm Bob Ross. I want to thank you for bringing me into your homes once again and welcome you to this week's Time Travel Tuesday. Coming in at number five in the votes for this week's topic were those happy little Polly Pockets. Number four, the TV show Full House. And number three, Dragon Ball Z, that crazy little Goku. Number two, Lord of the Rings. And number one was me, Bob Ross. Now I want to thank you for joining us here again today. And now my good friend Allie is going to tell you everything she knows about me, Bob Ross. Now I want to add a little window here, just a happy little window to look out of. It's right here on the side of the barn and you know maybe we're gonna add a, another window, give him a friend. Everybody needs a friend. Hey guys, so as my dear friend Bob Ross just told you, I will now be telling you everything that I know about him. And in honor of Bob Ross, I'm going to do a little art project for you guys today. <laughs> um, it's not a painting per se because I just have very little visual artistic talent whatsoever. But I found this um, engraving art <laughs> project uh, that will involve me using a little scraper uh, and engraving this uh, image <laughs> of some, looks like some foxes. So I'm going to be doing that for you today while I tell you everything that I know about Bob Ross, the father of ASMR. Okay guys, before I start on my little art project, I want to let you know that this week's vote is another themed vote, and the topic is nostalgic music. So I want you to tell me what band or musical artist from your childhood you would like me to tell you about next week, and vote in the comments below. Okay guys, so here is my <laughs> little art project. It's a... you can see that? Royal and Langnickel. Engraving art project. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I, I think you, I'm gonna open it up, but I think you use this little tool, this little scrapey tool, to um, sort of trace over a design that's already there. In this case, uh, this one is called Fox and Cub. You trace over, over the design and reveal some gold foil underneath, and so it's got a kind of metallic <laughs> look to it. So I'm going to do that for you now. I'm going to read the back, though. It gives instructions. It says, experiment with different techniques using your practice board. So I guess they give you a little practice. Create fine lines and detail with the point of the tool and broader strokes using the side. Begin at the top of your board and work your way down. Prevent fingerprints from being left on the board by placing a sheet of paper underneath your hand. While working on your picture, brush off excess scrapings with a damp cloth. So I guess I need to go get those things real quick. Okay, got my paper and my damp cloth. Open this up. Take everything out. Okay. So this is the actual picture, and I'm just gonna be scraping over it, I guess. And 
I'm not sure. I guess this is my practice board. Is that what this is? Maybe. Feels like the same kind of material. Maybe not. <laughs> we'll find out together. And here's my little scraping tool. I'm just gonna get this out of here. This is where I'll do practice strokes. Oh, yep, there we go. I see, okay. So you just scrape the black away. And then sort of brush off the shavings. It's a pretty shiny little gold. Okay, I think I've got that. I don't know if you can hear, but my neighbors are being a little bit noisy at the moment. I, I don't know, I guess they decided to have a block party or something. They decided to have a, a block party to celebrate the fact that I'm trying to shoot an ASMR video. How very thoughtful. So this says to just begin at the top and work your way down. So I'm going to do that and tell you what I know about Bob Ross. I have a feeling that I won't finish this entire <laughs> uh, project by the time I'm finished telling you all my interesting facts. Oh. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, in fact, I'm almost sure that I won't, but I'll get through as much as I can. Bob Ross was an American painter and art instructor and TV host. Uh, he's best known for being the host of uh, The Joy of Painting on PBS. And The Joy of Painting aired in the United States, in Canada, and in Europe. It was on the air for, oh, I think almost, almost 10 years, or maybe a little bit more than 10 years. Bob Ross um, was born in 1942, and he grew up in Orlando, Florida. When he was about 17, he enlisted in the uh, U.S. Air Force. And not long after that, he was transferred to a base in um, uh, Alaska. And in Alaska is where he, having grown up in Florida, is where he saw mountains for the very first time. And as many of you know, this would be a very strong influence on his paintings later in life. So, he some point studied with the painter William Alexander. Studied under him. And learned learned a lot from him. He always credited Bill Alexander with a great deal of his success. 
So when he was uh, working in the Air Force, he had um, he didn't have a lot of work breaks, and when he did, they were very short. But he wanted to paint, and he wanted to be able to sell his paintings. So he developed his uh, quick painting method. public became familiar with in The Joy of Painting. Uh, and he developed that so that he could uh, paint his, you know, do his paintings in the short amount of time that he had. During his breaks. Let me show you what I've got so far because it's shiny and pretty. Just get in the ears of the mama fox. So that's how he sort of developed that really quick way of painting really intricate looking landscapes. When he started doing that, and selling all of the many paintings he was able to complete, he realized that he was starting to earn more money doing that than from his job in the Air Force. So he sort of went on to create and host The Joy of Painting. And that was in January of 1983. That's when, I believe that's when the first episode came on. And all in all, there were 31 seasons of The Joy of Painting, which came out to 403 episodes. The format, the basic format of the show is in about a 30 minute block, he would create an entire landscape painting and you would just sort of follow along with him. And he used a technique called wet on wet oil painting, which is just exactly what it sounds like, where he, he was using oil paints, but instead of painting a layer and then waiting a long time for that to dry before he painted over it, he would just paint, continue to layer on more wet paint. He learned that technique from the artist that he had studied with, Bill Alexander, William Alexander. And uh, one thing that was pretty cool about the joy of painting was that uh, he would use basically the same colors, the same color palette in every single episode. There's just a, a handful of colors that he would always use, and he didn't really vary from them because he wanted the show to be sort of accessible to everyone, um, so that to complete the paintings, his viewers didn't have to just go out and spend a ton of money on all this different fancy, um, you know, a bunch of fancy supplies and 1,500 <laughs> different he just he wanted to keep it very simple and make it so that anyone could do it so some of the colors that he 
would use, which are familiar to people who are, grew up watching Bob Ross, were titanium white, phthalo green, Prussian blue, Van Dyke brown, alizarin crimson, sap green, cadmium yellow, and permanent red. And he really liked to use those colors uh, frequently. <laughs> he worked in these really kind of simple, simple strokes, nothing really um, complex. And a lot of times around maybe, the, you know, the beginning, towards the beginning and the middle of the show, it would just look kind of just like random smudges that weren't gonna become anything. But he would always transform the painting into something intricate and sort of beautiful and very impressive. say that his favorite part, one of his favorite parts of doing the paintings was getting to clean his brushes. He had a little ritual, a little specific way that he always cleaned off his brushes, which was, uh, well, he would, uh, he would dip his brushes in uh, odorless paint thinner, which he also very highly recommended uh, to his viewers for cleaning their brushes. And he would dip it in the paint thinner and then uh, he would bang the brush, bang the side of the brush on a table leg and just bang, 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 just shake it out to dry it. And you could tell in the videos that he really loved doing that because he always sort of <laughs> chuckles after really cute. It's funny. So he really, he really, really loved small animals, um, especially squirrels. He had a lot of squirrels in his yard, and he was always sort of finding sort of sick or injured animals and taking them in, <laughs> nursing them back to health. And he did this a lot with squirrels. And uh, he had a pet squirrel named Peapod, who appeared on the show sometimes. When he was a little kid, he loved animals so much, and, uh, you know, he grew up in Florida. And when he was a little kid, his mother found him with, with this, some kind of, an alligator of some kind, in the bathtub, injured. <laughs> brought it inside and was trying to care for it. <laughs> so yeah, he 
he would bring his little animals on the show sometimes. Now, um, the joy of painting his show, he didn't get paid for that. He did it didn't collect a salary for, for that. Um, and all his paintings that he did, he donated to PBS. And let them keep his work. The way he made money, the way he made his, his, his living was by uh, selling his books and his videotapes. in the Bob Ross method, and they would become uh, Bob Ross trained teachers, and so he made money that way uh, from classes and things, and uh, he also he also sold a line of uh, art supplies. And so that's how he made his living. company was very, very successful. Did very well. So, uh, Bob Ross really loved country music, and once he was at a Hank Snow concert, The Grand Ole Opry in Nashville, and Hank Snow <laughs> invited him to come on stage, and he did. Apparently he was really, really nervous, but he got up on stage with, with Hank Snow. And then after the show, he gave Hank a private painting lesson. also appeared on uh, the Joan Rivers show and gave an interview, and uh, Regis and Kelly. No, no, I'm sorry, Regis, it was with Regis and Kathy. That's who it was. And he was invited to appear on Oprah once, but he actually turned it down because Oprah, I guess, the topic of that show was not really in something he wanted to do. I think the topic was something really strange, like um, couples who are uh, couples who are in business together, but they don't live together. But they're, they're married, or they're I don't know. Involved. I'm not sure. I'm not exactly sure what the topic was, but either way, uh, Bob Ross didn't want to do it. He, if he was going to go on the show, he wanted to do paintings for the audience. So he ended up saying no, thank you to Oprah, which is a bold. sons, Bob and Stephen. And Stephen would occasionally appear on the Joy of Painting. Um, so yeah, he had Bob and Stephen with his first wife, uh, whose name was Linda, but they were divorced. And he remarried to a woman named Jane. 
but she passed away. She died of cancer in 1993, but he had another son with her by the name of Morgan. Yeah, his son Stephen would sometimes appear on the joy of painting with him. actually became a Bob Ross certified painting instructor. So, his dad taught him. Google celebrated Bob Ross's 70th birthday uh, by uh, doing a Google Doodle in his honor. They had a picture of him painting the G uh, with a landscape in the background. And that was uh, his 70th birthday, October 29th. Uh, and it was last year, it was 2012. Bob Ross has said that his time in the uh, in the Air Force was what kind of made him the soft-spoken, peaceful person that he was. He didn't like being a person that yelled and screamed at at others for for not doing their jobs right. So when he left, he took a vow to never scream. Very, very well known for his famous afro that he always had. But as it turns out, he didn't like it very much. He didn't really want to keep that haircut, but over time, he sort of became known for it, and he knew that if he cut it, it might not be a very smart business move for him, just on the marketing side of things, because that was just sort of part of his image. So he didn't really like his afro, but he kept it anyway. Kind of because everyone else <laughs> liked it and was used to it. And in 1995, on July 4th, he died of lymphoma. And the world little bit of a sadder place. I'll tell you a couple Bob Ross quotes that I like. One of my favorites is, the secret to doing anything is believing that you can do it. Anything that you believe you can do strong enough, you can do anything, as long as you believe. And then, of course, we don't make mistakes, we just have happy accidents. And there's a lot more that I like, but those are some of the, some of the really good ones. So, Bob Ross really was just a kind... gentle man, and he didn't even know it, but he made such an impact on so many of us who grew up watching him and being soothed by his voice and his encouraging words. He doesn't know that he's responsible for a generation of really calm people. <laughs> and he didn't know that this entire community of these wonderful people with this <laughs> special little phenomenon called ASMR. He didn't know that he 
helped sort of he helped that to be. <laughs> I didn't even know he was responsible for something so wonderful and for bringing so many amazing people together. I think so that if he were alive today and could see this little community, this little family, this world that he helped us all discover. I think if he could see that, it would bring him a lot of joy. hope that you have enjoyed this week's Time Travel Tuesday and found it interesting and relaxing and of course nostalgic. Don't forget to cast your votes in the comments below. you'd like to see this week's Thrifty Thursday uh, using that tiny ice cube tray to make um, tiny jello cubes because I thought that'd be a cool idea. A lot of you said that you would like to see it and I have to tell you that I tried. <laughs> I attempted that and this is what resulted. <laughs> 